Hello, my name is Sridhar Rangayan. I'm the festival director of Kashish Mumbai International Queer Film Festival, which is having its 12th edition right now. And we are on the third weekend, and you must have already seen hundreds of LGBTQ films over the last two weekends. So this weekend, you must have already watched this wonderful film all together by Marco Simon Pushoni and uh, Gian Petro Preziosa. And we're going to be having a dialogue with Marco Simon, uh, the director of the film, and also the protagonist of the film. He is a part of the film. It's his and his partner's life story along with his children. And to do the Q and A, we have Aditya Advani, who is a gay dad of nine-year-old twin kids. He and his partner Michael have been together for thirty years. Wow! They met in 1991 in Berkeley, California, when Aditya was a student. Two years previously, at the age of 26, Aditya had come out to his family and all his friends. and his family was immediately supportive in 1993 aditya and michael had a hindu wedding ceremony in delhi in his parents drawing room with all his friends in attendance wow in 2011 they decided to have kids through surrogacy and were blessed with twins the family now lives in delhi aditya is a landscape architect by profession and michael is a photographer the children are both artistically inclined and love the piano painting origami and lego wow that's awesome so uh, i'm just basically I'm happy to have two gay dads speaking to each other. So over to you, Aditya. Nice to meet you, Marco. Nice uh, to meet you, Aditya. I um, what, just saw your film, and my partner Michael saw it also, and my children also saw it with me. We all saw it together, and uh, we loved it. It was a wonderful film, and it was very uh, touching. And it felt really like we connected to it. The children enjoyed it a lot. And so I wanted you to begin by telling us a little bit about what inspired you to make this film. It tells the story of you know the uh, the whole the story of becoming a dad and the surrogacy and the surrogate story. So. What inspired you to make this film? Well, actually, Ritya, this is a, in a, um, we can say the second chapter of a project that I started uh, uh, when the children were born, which was which is named "My Journey to Meet You," saying that I was in starting this journey to meet uh, our children that we at the time I didn't know yet, and um, in 2012. I did the first documentary that's called Prima di tutto in English would be before anything else that tells how we became parents through surrogacy so it's mostly based on our journey to become parents through surrogacy and then coming back to Italy to see how our children were um, welcomed or not welcomed by the the family members and the society in general and but that stopped when the children were 2 years old then <clears throat> um inspired by other project that film over a lifetime span i did this other documentary uh, all together in which my idea was to have the children speak up tell directly about their experience of being uh, uh, kids children of two gay dads and um and then i had to adjust a little bit so that we also were in in um, in picture because first i wanted just them to speak but they don't i mean for them is such a normal thing to be children of two gay dads that is not an issue that they talk uh, naturally so we had to sort of uh, push them a little bit but not to push them too much we also were in the picture me and jean pietro uh, with our dialogue between uh, each other uh, about our fears about our you know fights to get recognition for our family and and all this so uh, it came out a film that is balanced between the parents uh, concerns and the uh, children uh, that also speak about their conditions but in a more playful way in more more like you know coming up with their energy with their childhood energy and not making big uh, theoretical speeches about it but just living just living the 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 reality yeah so that basically was it like a second part for for a larger project uh, which i never know if i do the the next part but we will see we will see if there will be a third part i did uh, 
uh, a fiction film now uh, called The Invisible Thread for Netflix, which I'm finishing it. And that would be, in a way, could be an ideal um, continuation of this, but it's, it's a completely different film and it's it's a fiction film, it's for Netflix, so it's a different approach. But, but anyway, it's all together. So it's like the second chapter of this project that is called My Journey to Meet You. So it kind of evolved, your thoughts evolved as you went along. You were doing this footage, you were taking footage, and then you kind of developed the film as you went along. And later yes, yes. I, I, I was starting filming because all the parents film these things. And also, of course, I am a filmmaker, so I filmed with more intention. And I didn't have an idea about making a documentary, you know, the first one, but I realized that, uh, I don't know if it's the same for you, but I realized that at the time in 2008, 2009, when I started the journey with Gian Pietro, we were really among the first couples in Italy to do so. Probably, to my knowledge, the first like eight, 10 couples to have children to surrogacy in America. And uh, so I knew that our experience was uh, special and the first uh, documentary, in fact, was very useful for many uh, dads that were very dubious about starting this journey. And after they watched my first film, uh, they really said, okay, then it's possible. Then it can be a nice journey, nice path. You can have a good relationship with the, uh, donor and the um, surrogate and uh, the families and the children, you know, um, are doing well. They're not, uh, um, they don't come out with issues or problems. So, right. you know, that, that helped a lot of people to uh, go ahead and have their children. Right. There were a lot of fears. I also had fears going in. How would the children themselves grow up and what would society say, but more about the children themselves, their well-being, that they would be good, um, adjusted children. And uh, it's interesting, I have a, there's a lot of parallels here, which are very interesting. Um, so you are uh, developing this. Do you have any um, forms about including the children in the movie, movies themselves, or you know, bringing them because their privacy is kind of yeah. This. We we had of course some concern, you know, about um, our privacy and their privacy first of all, and um, you know we were encouraged by the fact that the first documentary when they were just two years old uh, was for them useful when they were. Uh, at school or at the gym and kids were saying, where is your mom, how, uh, how ha what happened, how, why are your parents and so on. And they would explain it, but then they would say, okay, if you don't understand that, just give you the documentary and you will understand. And then now that they're older, they are 11, they go at middle school and I tell them, you know, you have these two documentaries. So it's up to you if you want to show it to your friends or you don't want to show it to your friends. I mean, right. uh, they are broadcasted and they are available in DVDs, but not like your friends were, would go look for them if you don't tell them about it. Because it's not like a big production that people, everybody will know, but um, eventually we will watch TV or we'll uh, look for it and we'll watch it. But I don't, I mean, they've seen the film and they don't, they're not ashamed. They, they just, um, so far they don't really make an issue about it, you know? I mean, they know that there is society, there is people that are against it, there are people that are in favor, but most of the friends just don't, you know, they know. They don't, they don't care. They don't, they don't care so much. Now, we will see when they will be older and they will uh, enter in a more sexual life, you know, and right. then they will uh, question themselves about uh, sexual preference and gender identity and these kind of things. What would that do but you know i felt that um in, in especially in our society to become a witness of our stories um helps society to um, dismiss their fears because there was a lot of fears about you know how a child would be brought up by gay dads and what would be their the outcome and right. many people think of course it's going to be gay too 
you know, and you know all these kind of, of things that, um, and this is not, they're not true, but you know, society has a lot of fears about us, and uh, having a story that tells how we are helps them to relax, you know, <laughs> in a way. No, I, I applaud you because you know, um, I uh, personally I'll just interject a little bit about my personal experience. When we we are, I think one of the openly only openly gay parents in India. We were in America and then we wanted to live in India for a reason so that people here had a sense that gay parenthood was possible. Mm -hmm. But when we had our children, I was invited to be on one of these talk shows uh, in from Mumbai, you know, from a, one of our leading mm -hmm. actors, Satyamev Jayate is the name of the talk show. And he and Amir Khan, his team reached out and said, would you like to come out and speak on TV? I didn't want to do that. I felt uh, I didn't, India society is conservative. That time the children had just been born. And even now people want to make a documentary on our life. And uh, I'm interested to hear what you say because I, I fear I don't really want my children to be in a documentary or be in the public sphere. The unfounded fear, now that you tell me this is good to hear it from you because it sounds like it's an unfounded fear of, you know, and that it has lots of positive aspects is what I'm hearing you say, and outweigh well, the potential negative aspects. To tell you the truth, you know, we, we have chosen how to expose ourselves. Like, right. we, always, we always rejected the invitation to go on talk show on TV. Right. Yeah. We, I didn't it's want to uh, go in a, in a TV show and start fighting with someone that didn't think like us and that was judging our lives. We said, no, we don't go there. We don't go on TV to uh, shout or to get mad in for, for a show. Sure. We, we decided how to expose uh, our life, our story in a, in a way that we find it proper cool. and uh, if you've seen the documentary, it's not like we are just celebrating ourselves, but we also deal with um, issues and questions which may be also uncomfortable. Uh, trying to be honest and uh, dealing with this, saying, yeah, it's a different situation, it's a different family, there is no mom. Um, what does this make to the children? You know, uh, we still have a relationship. I don't know if it's the same for you. Uh, with our surrogate in America and uh, the donor, we exchange photos, we, we are in touch. They came, as you see in the documentary, for our civil union, you know, for the celebration of the union. So just to say, because people tend to think that one of the uh, many reasons why people are against surrogates in Italy is just because they feel that these women are poor, they are exploited, they don't know what to do with their bodies and so on. And they say, look, if this was the case, why after years would they cross the oceans to come for our civil union? If sure. they were so sorry and you say they gave up their children, they sold their children, why the hell would they still come here and uh, cheer our family, you know, for this moment and invite us to go to their house uh, after years after years? And so, um, you know, it, it was a way, the documentary also was, was a way to um, really say the reality of my family, but of all the family I know is like that. It's like uh, a network of affection. In Thank which you, I love know, that. There is no um, real mom, but there is a network of people, uh, not just her, but her husband and their children, you know, they, as you see in the documentary, also my children hugs. They, they are their children. You know, they feel right. they, they feel right. uh, affection for them. They play with them. You know, so um, I think it's just enriching their lives that they have more relationship. Of course, we are their family. You know, the two dads and them. But you know, life is much more than that. It's much more beyond our family. You know, there is. Uh, we encourage them to be open and connected to all kinds of people. Right. No, no, actually, uh, it's very wonderful that you bring that up because in India now, surrogacy was banned uh, last year for the same reason 
that it was brought up that the women were being exploited and they may have been but then they should have found ways to um, found ways to restructure their compensation and make sure they were taken care of it's, uh, it's forbidden only for foreigners no or forbidden also now, now it's it's been banned for foreigners and for gays specifically it's homophobic for gays and for single people also single men women only married people can have surrogacy if they've been married five years and the surrogate has to be related altruistic surrogate it's called which is really open to a lot of problems in india because you know their joint families and a daughter-in-law of another brother could be forced into having children even if she doesn't want to mm. or sister-in-law could be and you know and then it's not compensated and so even within families it should be compensated mm. and uh, it needs to and then whose child is it it creates complication this way if it's a kind of done through a kind of a commercial setup then at least it's, there's a clarity to that is you know how it's being transacted so this has been banned now in india completely which i think it's a big opportunity lost for indian gays because now we can't have families we were just like a last few first and the last few um, i know about seven eight other people who continue to have children here but now we're not allowed to but did you have economy. your children to surrogacy in india or in america in, in india and in india you're um, you're not told who the egg donor is you have a relationship with the surrogate and you are um, but the egg donor is by law and you were all throughout you've never been allowed to say who the surrogate the egg donor is so we don't know who she is and the surrogate um, is someone you do meet because you go with her to the doctor and support her and i could she continues to call me and needs financial help whenever she does i help her i you know putting her kids through school so they call saying you know we so whatever they need i'm their support system and uh, so it, it you know people have this thing that it's kind of a it's a negative situation but it actually isn't uh, for me at least it's been a very positive situation and i found that a lot of um um that a lot of people um you know uh, even amongst gay situations they they gays they don't support surrogacy in india unfortunately but um in italy too there are some gays um, uh, yeah. that they don't support yeah yeah they just you know there's a kind of feeling that the women was getting exploited but all the women in india doing surrogacy were doing it of their own will they went into it through their own volition they were happily compensated their lives improved considerably uh, they got a large amount of money uh, as that results so anyway we don't want to dis dis discuss that but what i wanted to really bring up was also with you uh, another question which i had was um, i know you uh, there was a lot of discussion in the movie about uh, mom mom and dad mama and all that and there's a lot of discussion on the word mom and who the mom is I wanted to ask you: Did you ever consider that one of the dads could be the mom? Did the kids ever call you mama? Well, um, it came up a little when they were very little, and uh, I was wondering if you know they could see me as a mama. But one of my child says, "You can't be a mama; you're a man." So it just cut that thing down completely. Right. Well, although they played with the word, you can see in the documentary, say mom or mama, you know, they play with the word around it too. But in Italy, we have uh, two words for saying that, you know, like papa and dad in English. Yeah. So we have uh, dad, dad, daddy, uh, papa and babbo. Is a, in, um, according to different region of Italy, people use babbo or people use papa. And um, since my family originally is from Tuscany, they use Babbo. So we decided to separate the, the name uh, like Babbo and Papa. And that, that was it. But the boat refers to the figure of a father, not a mother, because we felt uh, we abandoned that because to say a mother is a different, is different. You know, a mom is a mom, is a woman that nourishes you and, in, in a different way. Then we can uh, have a motherly uh, attitudes you know like very welcoming and we are differentiated i mean the way we educate our children is quite different 
culturally we come from different background, me and Gian Pietro. So, and I also, my character is different than, than his. And in the South, you know, like they sort of, to be, to impose the parents' law more, they shout at the kid and I'm more talking about, you know, more welcoming. So they could see more motherly in a way, but it doesn't really apply, you know, to the gender of the, I mean, it's, I think it's more character than, than that. That's interesting because, you know, when my children were about two and a half, they, well, my daughter said to me, who's my mother? And I instinctively just said, I am. And she said, I found my mother. I said, that's fine. You're my, you're, and they've called me mama since. Mm -hmm. And uh, even my little son came up two minutes later, they're twins. They said, he said, can I call you mom? I said, yeah. And they continue to call me mom and they do it in the marketplace, in the swimming pool, at the club, make sure everyone knows. They, I think they do it purposely, make sure that everyone knows. And I figured it doesn't hurt my masculinity. And I kind of would defer with you a little bit that I feel, you know, I used, that was one of my fears that I would not be able to give the child the love for mother that I got from my mother. My mother was a very super affectionate and motherly mother. <laughs> And she was very protective of me. And I felt, oh yeah, well, she could give me, I, I, I won't be able to supply them with the same level of tenderness and love. Well, yeah, I'm not a woman, uh, but um, I feel I can do it. And I would like to encourage, at least expand the idea that a man is capable of being a mother. Just like a grandfather can be a mother if there needs to be, if there's no other father around. And I have many friends in the US who've had children through surrogacy and I was prepared for this because I saw their kids were calling them mama and I said yeah, my child is calling you mama this is before we had kids it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what, what she calls me mm -hmm. so I said well, that's fine no, no, no. in my experience it's the first time that I uh, hear uh, children calling their father one of the father's mama it's interesting oh, really? though. no no and also not only that they know that I'm they say you're not a mama you're a man but you're both a mama and a papa, and so they like calling them. The whole family calls me, <laughs> and so it's kind of interesting. When they are with their friends and they they call you mama, they are their they friends. Oh, so they call me Popsy now, Popsy and Daddy, but their their friends know that they call me mama. And oh. uh, with my brother's extended family, they all know. In our extended family, they all know I'm mama. <laughs> but like where, like where, uh, when your brother refers to you. Speaking to him, he say, you know, go to see your He's dad like or yeah, your mom. Popsy. They all call me Popsy. Yeah. 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 They came up with my nickname. And so. Okay. Yeah. So, so Popsy but, is your nickname that means dad or means uh, just your nickname for any situation? Papa, no, Papa is just Popsy. They, but once we were at a party and um, they were, um, we were asked by, um, they, was, they were playing by themselves and some lady was sitting there and she told them, oh, you're very charming little children. Where's your mother? What's your mother's name? Uh, they said Popsy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's interesting. I'm glad, but I, so I'm glad to hear about that, that you did have that experience and saw that, um, you saw that maybe, but yeah, you know, maybe other families, maybe for you it was one thing, but I think, I personally think it's it's okay for the gay father to be called mama, and I hope they, their children call me mama too. Like we discussed that, that their children will call me. <laughs> and that I, will I think every family finds uh, its way, you know. And they have to create their own uh, sense of how to uh, understand that situation. Now, my, my, as you see in, in my documentary, there's an issue how to call the surrogate. Right. And the other people of this extended family. Right. The reason was, um, you know, within the family, we call her Cynthia or Amanda or Auntie or whatever. Um, but then I figured not for us, but also for the society, um, to come up with a term that is more affectionate, that would, people would understand, that if my kids would tell to their friends, they say, you know, uh, in, in September, we are going to America to see my dede, and society knows that dede is a surrogate, it's the person who gives birth, but is not really playing the role of a mom, 
but is the person who gives. Okay, now you got the term surrogate, which means the same, but it's a very technical term. Yeah. So, and it's called. So within a family in which there is affection for this person, I thought come up coming up with a term that is uh, uh, share with society. And of course, society needs to uh, some time to understand and, and make um, understand this term. But I think it should come from our families to give uh, them a term that is not derogatory, that is not technical, that is not cold, in which people can understand that when a child says, I'm going to see my daddy, they understand, oh, I understand. You know, like I see my auntie, I see my mom, I see my uncle. With these terms, they understand what kind of relationship the person that is talking has with that person. If I say, go to see my auntie, it's probably the sister of my dad or my mom, you know. So if when I go to see my dad, I understand she's a, she was a surrogate and now she's a, a person in your uh, circle, an affectionate circle. It's wonderful you, you bring that up and I'll tell you something interesting. In the word Didi, D-I-D-I in India is used for your nanny. And also people, your sister, Deed sister, Didi. It's very similar to Dede. Mm -hmm. And all the children here mostly are brought up. A lot of children are brought up by nannies and like their nanny is called Didi. And uh, so, uh, and not only children of gay parents, but a lot of children are brought up by their nannies and their nannies are Didi, that they're like their surrogate moms. Yeah, one of, one of the words that we were using, because in Italy there were nannies that were giving milk right. to the, the children of the family where they were working. Sometimes, right. sometimes, right. sometimes they were called uh, mamma latte, milk mama. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and so from that, one of the words that we were using sometimes was uh, for the surrogate, belly mama. Right. But then again, it, since it was bringing up the word mama inside, you wanted an alternative Different because uh, yeah, otherwise, you know, you're saying, okay, she's a mom, but she sort of, uh, I don't want, I don't want them to internalize the fact that she was a mom, but she right. abandoned them. Right, right. No, no I, I would say don't fear that at all. And I don't think that will ever happen. And um, that that is, I, my sense was that was your fear. <laughs> but I want to ask something about, you know, I love the fact that you said the children are the future of change. And I also feel that, that the children will change the future. And in Italy, religion is a very strong, like in India, has a strong stranglehold on, mm -hmm. on the individual. You know, the religious upbringing is so confused in you that you mm -hmm. can't really get beyond it in a way even if you want to i think you know it's pervasive so uh was there a religion play in your children's upbringing in any way has there been any impact of uh, religion and will the children be able to impact religion in, in italy do you think in any way well of course there is a, a lot of debate because in italy we it's a catholic country like france or spain but we also have the Pope here, you know, living in a state right. in the city. So sometimes we have um, a lot of interference of politics uh, with this. And, um, you know, my, our choices, uh, when you see in the other documentary that we did uh, baptize them, but in Italy there was, a, uh, there is a also not a Catholic church, but uh, a smaller Protestant church called uh, the Waldesian uh, um, that, that was even made established before uh, the Luther, but then um, um, it, it's part of uh, that Protestant churches, and they are very welcoming. You know, they when is um, the gay pride, they put up the the flag in their churches. You know, and they're very very welcoming people, very. Christian in the sense that they uh, really attach to the gospel, but they they are not part of the Vatican, they're not part of the Catholic Church, so they don't have all this hierarchy and problems. It's much more um, direct. So I, I felt that, that, you know, I had a Catholic upbringing, same John Pietro. At the same time, we had so many conflicts uh, as gays uh, with the church, not, not only as gays, but also as citizens in many ways. And we decided that we still think that, you know, Christian teachings were good teachings because it's non-violent and it's uh, love your neighbor, you know, so something that we feel that is a good value to give uh, 
then of course you can believe or not believe in God, but that's another level. But the moral teaching of Christianity were good for a non-violent and uh, inclusive society. So we did say we want to baptize them and we went through this other Protestant church where we were welcome as two dads, no problem. And then um, we, we live our lives uh, not very religiously in general, not uh, so committed to any religion very much, but we, I, le I let them follow the religion classes in school Okay. Just because, as you said, it's very pervasive and it's everywhere. It's also in the arts. And, um, and I mean, if you want to know the history of arts in Italy, you have to know the, the, the Bible because it's sure. so much in it, as much as uh, the mythology and so on. So I let them know because I, I know that even if they get these teachings, it's not like they're going to be uh, so um, seduced by it, you know, like they can become atheist, uh, you know, my, one of my child already said, I don't know if I believe in God or no, I think maybe nature made it all. So it's not like they, but at the same time, it does go to um, a, a Catholic association who helps others go to help old people. You know, I try not to make it so that it's okay. No, Catholics are against us. So we are against Catholics. I don't want to make walls, you know, yeah. Like we can um, cooperate with everyone and not necessarily hate if they say if the Pope or the hierarchy say something against us, you know, I don't really care. I mean, I look at the good Catholics and the, what they're doing, the good deeds, and they say to my sons, yeah, you can work with them or we work with any other people. Uh, um, it's no, no way. I mean, if they're doing good, you do good with them. Right, right, right. No, I love, I love that. And uh, there's a grace in the world and you're teaching them to negotiate, um, negotiate correctly. Uh, I just wanted to understand, you know, there were some very beautiful lines in the movie, uh, the child, one of your children, son says that you've got to remember, you know, if you fall in a hole and then you forget, you'll stumble and fall in the hole again. Tell me a little bit about that. How did he say that? What, what made him say that? It's so important for gays to know this line and understand, understand it in our lives because people think we made a lot of progress. If you and I know we made it in very few years in our lifetime and it could, we could have a regressive, we could go back so easily, you know? So we what, know, we know easily. Yeah. What prompted him to say that? Well, you know, Andrea is the son of other a couple of gay dads too, and uh, his, his dads are very smart, intellectual, and so he got a lot of it. So he understands, and it was beautiful that he had this metaphorical way of of putting it, uh, uh, mm -hmm. what the importance of memory and saying <clears throat> you can't give for granted any of the achievement that we made because things can be overturned um, very quickly. Very right. quickly, and uh, we shouldn't forget that the gays were discriminated. Now you see that uh, maybe in Italy or I don't know in India, being gay is not such a big issue. Although some kids, unfortunately, still commit suicide for this, uh, or they are um, they pull their legs for these reasons. But in general, uh, you know, most of the young Italians, the, their friends say, I'm gay. It's not like, oh, wow, you know, they, they say, okay, you're gay, fine, you know. They don't, they tend to be more um, open and welcoming, but still, you know, there are, it's not like once done is forever and, and not everyone is like that and still people may be excluded or discriminated for these reasons. So um, we should always cultivate the memory and um, understand these like issues like racism and other issues that um, you know brought some tragedies in in the world and should not be forgotten although now we don't see them in our lives uh, well, yes. if your movie for that reason is so important as a you know way to document this and so that we don't forget, I like the little political stuff that you show again, you know, the and anti-gay rallies. That's important to also include in the movie. And I'll end with one more last question, which is, you know, we are now um, disconnected to this. We are about to have some hearings in India now about gay marriage. 
and it's been trying to be pushed through. And of course, like in America, there was a debate, is it necessary, is marriage, you know, heteronormative institution, is it even needed? And, um, and being gay is a big deal in India still. I mean, it's less so, but I think it's still a big deal for a lot of people. The individual has a lot of angst about it. The families, are, I mean, you know, people who have less problems are few, but people who have more problems. Problems are a larger amount, and so I wanted to ask you, uh, what do you feel is is the would marriage change if India had gay marriage, which, you know, which is going to come up within this week, I think, or next week, and if it, and the government pretends it's a non-issue, keeps pushing it aside, like there's no time. Why are we pushing this idea? Do you think gay marriage would change the situation in India for 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 gay people? I think it will. I think it's, it is an issue. And um, as a couple, for example, we didn't feel we needed it because we live together, we love each other. We, need this, we didn't think that we needed the state to certify this. Rather, we wanted to uh, have the possibility to adopt each other's son, which didn't go through. So still it's not uh, possible, but the civil union, but our civil union is almost like a marriage, very advanced. And uh, we could see that make a lot of change in the perception of others. So that made a big change in, uh, uh, in our families, in John Pietro's family especially. And we understand that for so many people to have a public official with the flag of your country on, you know, here, and saying or in an official um, city hall, uh, uh, say, okay, now you are a couple and we grant you the rights of the married couple. That makes a big, big difference culturally. You know, the rights, now sometimes you use it, sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't care because you don't use them. But in case of need, they are there. And also in most important society, sees you as a, a couple and when you talk with other people yes wait a moment i have to talk to my husband they say ah they didn't expect me to have a husband they expected me to have a wife when when they say husband they say oh okay you know and um, you know the, the, the mother of john pietro where the issues of uh, saying that his son was gay and that you know living with another man and so on before once she saw that the Italian state was behind this, this no more problem. I can go and speak with my friends and say, yes, my my husband, my son is married with a man. This is the law. This is the flag. This is national. Okay? No, you can't. You can't criticize me. And those before she was kind of shy, but then when uh, she saw the the state behind that. She says, then it's your problem. If you have a problem with that, it's your problem. It's not my problem because this is a law. This is the state. It's approved. So no more issue for me. I totally agree with you. And I think uh, I'm, you know, I 100% agree. And I think our situation in India will change as soon as we have gay marriage. We had a wonderful movie come out last year about to a gay marriage in India. First time we had a... Bollywood movie made on gay marriage. I think it had a wonderful positive impact. And I completely 100% agree with what you're saying that it has a cultural impact and has such a, you know, and as children, I think the children are the agent of change. And if we could have children and we could be married, our situation, our perception by culture would change. So I think I totally, I love your words and I hope our audience finds them encouraging. And I hope our courts change our situation and grant yes, us yeah. our basic right to love. I love, I love India. I've been twice and uh, I know there are some similarities with Italy, although very different countries, but some similarities in the sense that the family is the center of society, mm -hmm. that we are a traditional society. So in the sense, even if India is more Hindu and here is more Catholic, but still, regardless, you know, the family, the mother figures that you know, it's very important here and there. And so um, it's interesting to see change in India too, coming to I mean, such a one billion people or more, you know, coming together and uh, 
dealing with the cultural change. Although, I mean, I, I'm sure the change will come more in Delhi and Mumbai or other big cities rather than in the countryside. No, no, I think if there's gay marriage, there would be marriage even in the countryside, you know. We hear of stories, people getting married in villages, lesbians and gay couples. So I think, really? I think as long as it does it, because Indians are wanting to embrace their children. If it was legal, they'd be happy to marry them. All the Indian parent wants is to marry their child. Mm -hmm. and so if marriage was a possibility for the gay child, I think our lives would become easier. I uh, love talking to you. I think your insight was wonderful. Come visit us. I would like my children to meet yours. If you come yes, to England, sure. please do visit us. I would love to stay in touch. And uh, your movie is wonderful. And uh, really thank you for making it. And I love, I love the fact you documented it for your children and that you, they're the agents of the future. The lovely words in it, lovely dialogues. And it really showed us how our lives have a bigger expanded possibility. And I think that's really inspiring for our audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aditya. Thank you for liking the film. And I wish I could be there with the audience now, but the situation doesn't allow, but hopefully soon. Hopefully. Yeah. So thank you so much, Aditya, for this wonderful conversation between you and Marco. And both of you have similar lives uh, in different countries, uh, culturally very similar, as you just discussed. And I just hope the same-sex marriage rights uh, come through in India so that, like, uh, also we need to basically move away from the very heteronormative sense of families, you know, uh, be more accepting of uh, two gay dads, two gay moms, and their children. And I'm sure, like, I mean, the children will grow up to be fine people. I mean, the way you people are rising, raising their children. So uh, thank you for sharing these thoughts, Marco, and uh, best of luck with the film. And the film uh, uh, is being played as a centerpiece film at Kashish because it's been so special that we gave it a special slot of a centerpiece film. And uh, we just hope more and more people have watched the film. And if any of you watch the film and also have, uh, are watching this particular Q&A, please put your questions here. And I'll make sure that Marco sees these questions and answers you if you have any questions for him or his partner or the children for sure. I'll, so thank I'll you for this Q&A. I would yeah, be very happy about your questions. Yeah, I wish you could be here, of course, for Kashish, but uh, well. So uh, we just hope that like uh, next year we're going to be having a ground event. But don't miss our award ceremony on September 5th. So do, do join us for the award ceremony on September 5th. Thanks a lot for this lovely Q&A. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.